Hi there. It's Wednesday night. I'm Pastor Jeff, Pastor Jeff Maggard of Sulphur Christian Church. So glad to have you here with me. Tonight we're going to be looking in God's Scripture, the Holy Bible, about answers to a worldwide epidemic. We're going to talk tonight about overcoming anxiety. If you yourself aren't suffering from some sort of anxiety, I'm sure you know someone or maybe many someones who are. We're going to talk tonight. We're going to talk in depth about how God already knew we would get to this point in history. And we're going to talk about how God put into his word how we can overcome anxiety, how we can deal with it, how we can treat it. And it's very important that um, we open up our hearts, we open up our minds, we open up our spirits to what God teaches us because the world is telling us something totally different. The world is trying to tell us that we can take care of this ourselves, that through self-help we can overcome anything. And it's simply not true. It's just simply not the truth. But there are ways, and we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. So I want to open us up quickly in prayer and get right into talking about overcoming anxiety. This is something a lot of people need to hear, okay? And perhaps you're one of them. But like I said a moment ago, if you're not one of them, you know someone who does need to hear this. So we'll have the opportunity, you'll have the opportunity when I'm finished tonight to share this with people that you know. Share this, put this on your newsfeed, uh, send the link to this to people because uh, they're gonna need to hear it. There's a lot of people that need to hear this. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, this isn't the, the Jeff Maggard uh, method of overcoming anxiety. This is the Jesus way, the godly way, the Holy Word, the Holy Bible way of dealing and overcoming anxiety. Father God, you know our every care. You know our every need. So, Father God, open the scriptures to us. And, Father God, let us be an open vessel that you can pour these truths into because I have too many people around me, Father God, that feel locked in a closet with no windows and no doors. And, Father God, they need to see light. They need a way out. And I know that your light and your way is the way out of those places. So, Father God, open us up. Help our ears, our eyes, our minds, our hearts to hear what you have to teach us. In your precious, holy, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, again, welcome. So glad that you're here. Uh, I know, I know that overcoming anxiety can feel impossible. I know that sometimes people can get to a point where they feel like they're in a room with no windows, no door, and that the light around them is slowly fading into darkness. But it doesn't have to stay that way. That's the good news. This is what I want to share with you right now. Anxiety is a mountain that you can see standing in front of you. It's there. Sometimes it's day in and day out. Sometimes it wavers. Sometimes you have good days. Some days you have bad days. But anxiety can be there in every situation. Perhaps you've prayed about it. Maybe you've asked God, please take this away from me. And maybe you've even asked yourself this. Maybe you've cried out to God and maybe you've asked yourself, is overcoming anxiety even possible? Well, I wanna give you some encouragement right now. The answer is yes, 
it is possible. And we're gonna talk tonight about how. I want some folks to come on board and believe. And those of us in the faith already trusting God, please pray for every single person that sees this and hears this and needs this. Pray over them. Pray over our brothers and sisters and the lost and unsaved that are crippled, crippled by depression and anxiety. No, sir, no, ma'am, you do not have to stay there. So what we're going to talk about, very first thing is implementing practical steps, things that make sense. The truth is, no matter what we suffer from, disease, sickness, uh, disorders, it typically doesn't get all the way better overnight. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes some discipline. It's okay. It's okay to take baby steps. It's okay to let little things move you along. It's also a great thing not to let yourself get discouraged if things aren't moving as quickly as you want. But implement some practical steps. My first challenge is if you're really wanting and trying to overcome anxiety, is see your circumstances through a spiritual lens. The most difficult thing with anxiety is holding on to a world view or a worldly view or what the world says. Getting caught up in that is unfortunately a source of anxiety, not the way out of it. So if we study our Bible, if we read, if we go to church, if we worship, if we will just allow ourselves to open up to what he has to say to us, what he has to teach us, if we will somehow learn to see our circumstances through a spiritual lens, we seek what God says, we'll begin to find our way out of anxiety and depression. See your circumstances through spiritual lens. Next, know that overcoming anxiety is a process. It takes time, it takes discipline, it takes effort, and like I said, you have to take baby steps first, and it's okay. You may sprint a few steps and run into a wall. It's okay. It's part of the process. Trust God. Trust his word. Trust where he's taking you, not necessarily where you're at right now, but trust God to move you along. So what is anxiety? So anxiety is described as afraid or nervous, especially about what may or might happen, causing or showing fear or nervousness. So a lot of times the word anxiety itself is immediately related with fear. Fear of what may happen, fear of repercussions from what has happened in the past, fear of the unknown, fear of lies, fear of sometimes everything, moving forward, moving backwards, left, right. Sometimes it's a crippling feeling, anxiety. So we need to make sure that we're very, very careful about uh, associating anxiety with the only fear. We know that the Bible has a lot. Listen, <laughs> it's amazing. God knows us. He knows we're going to have anxiety. He knows we're going to have issues. He knows, and we know that the Bible has so much to say about fear. We know it has a lot to say about anxiety and depression and fear and how uh, that ha happens. And according to the Bible, listen, according to God's word, 
anxiety snares you. It'll reach out and grab you when you least expect it. Anxiety will grab you and try to pull you away. Listen to Proverbs 29, 25. Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. The world, the enemy is always trying to grab us and pull us into the dark and take and shake our confidence. But if we'll slowly over time learn to trust the Lord, those snares won't work anymore. Those triggers won't be effective anymore because we'll just be able to say, no, no, Satan, not today. We're not playing that game. I trust in the Lord. He's made a way for me and I'm going with him. And it's a beautiful thing that God gives us. So anxiety snares us to anxiety is from the enemy. Okay, get it in your head, in your heart today. There is God, Jehovah God, our God, our creator, the author and perfecter of our faith. And there is a devil. There is Satan. He is real. And he is the author of depression and anxiety and fear and lies and deceit. Second Timothy 1 7 says this, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Listen, that's exactly opposite of what the enemy Satan tells us. But God is telling us, God is showing us, and God will prove in us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has us under his wings all the time. So the Bible says anxiety snares you. The Bible says that anxiety comes from the enemy. And third, the Bible tells us that anxiety is overcome with God's perfect love. Anxiety is overcome with God's perfect love. Listen to this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. If we focus our love and we focus our mind and our attention on Jesus, on God, on the things that he teaches us, the truth, the truth is we have nothing to fear because he's here. God is with us. God is for us. And if God is for us, no one and nothing can be against us. So if you're really, really feeling crippled and crushed by anxiety, just put your arms up and say, no, no, I love God and God loves me and I am safe. How do we overcome anxiety? We overcome it with God's perfect love. Think of anxiety as a battle taking place in the recesses of your mind, in your thought processes, in the way you think, in the way you perceive things around you. Think about what causes you the most anxiety. What do you see? What do you experience? What do you think about most that triggers your anxiety? A lot of times it is fear of the unknown, fear of things we can't see or don't know what's coming, and we worry. 
don't we? We worry about things, and a lot of times they're things we can't control, things we can't really do anything about other than be positive and trust God. These places are where the enemy, where Satan wants to keep hidden and in the dark. He throws tormenting lies around. Let me tell you, virtually 100% of anxiety is mm -hmm. lies. Mm -hmm. Saying, making you think the worst possible scenario is gonna happen no matter what you do, but that is a lie. That is not the truth. Satan lies about your past. Satan lies about your failures and the insecurities that you have, making you think about that more than anything else. It causes us to have anxiety, to have fear, because we're, we're wondering, are my past mistakes, are my failures, are the things that I've thought, said, done, my insecurities, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not young enough, I'm not thin enough, I'm not smart enough, I don't love enough, people don't love me. Th those are lies. It is not true. And you have to somehow grasp the truth of God and go, I'm not gonna believe those lies anymore, Satan. And then they land in those hidden places in your mind. They don't just sit there silent. They keep speaking to you in your mind and they fester and grow. And it's like a virus that grows in your mind and it tries to drown out the light in your life with darkness. And in order to overcome that, we have to let the light in us grow. And we have to trust God. The good news is that those dark places in your mind those insecurities, those failures, those past mistakes, they can be filled with new, good love and truths. They can be filled with good and pure thoughts. So the anxiety has no place, no place to live in your mind, in your psyche in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. There'll be no room. You can replace those thoughts that pull you back into the dark with thoughts that will force you forward into the light. So listen to this. I hope you have a pen and paper. I hope you have, have been taking notes. If not, go back and start from the beginning. Write down some of these scriptures we're talking about now. If not all these scriptures about anxiety, about God, about his truths. But listen, here you go. I want to give you some truths to start filling your mind with. And if you fill your mind with these truths from God, they will start to replace those things that cause your anxiety and depression. It will absolutely transform the way you think and you'll start to transform the way you feel, the, the way you react. So here we go. Start filling your mind with these truths. Your spirit, who you are, is being made new in Christ. The old you can go away. And through his truths, through his spirit, through his promises, you can be made new. 
Things do not have to stay the same. You do not have to live in the dark. You do not have to believe the lies. You can move forward in the truth that God has for us. You are being made new in Christ. Your spirit is. Inside you, if you will allow yourself, even for a moment, to connect with God, he will testify with you that you belong to him. Just open yourself up for just a moment to trust him and to hear him say, my child, you belong to me and I love you and I care for you and you matter. You are important. Allow your that truth to fill your mind. God only speaks truth. God only speaks truth. God will never fill your mind with a lie. He will never try to fool you. He will always tell you the truth. Truth comes from God. He is the creator and the source of truth. So do not ever think God lies to you because he does not. There are no lies in God. There are no lies coming from God. We need to believe it. Fill your mind with these simple truths. You belong to God. And we should be so full of joy for that. The soul, however, listen, the soul can still struggle, okay? The mind, will, and emotions. That's what the soul is. Your mind, your will, I want to do this or I don't want to do that, and your emotions. Those things that just can go off the rails almost any time, right? Okay, so the soul can still struggle to come into alignment with the spirit even after knowing the good news. Some of the greatest believers that I have ever known have still found themselves misguided and maybe stumbling down the wrong road. It's, it's part of life, but we have to get stronger. We have to make sure we're more aware by trusting God, giving everything to him, letting all these things go to him and let him lead us. The Bible says the fleshly mind, that is the soulful mind, is at war against the spirit of God. I know it, I know we want to get better so badly and we want it quick and we want it now and we want it as easy and painless as possible. But our minds in a lot of ways are at war with the Spirit of God. Sometimes it's because we don't understand it Sometimes it's because we don't get it, and that's okay. We need to make sure that we tell our soul to get out of the way and ask the Spirit to take the lead. Listen to this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems you from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle? Psalm 103, 1 through 5. Amazing. Incredible. 
So before we close tonight, uh, I want to share some statistics, okay? According to the National Institute of Mental Health, adults 18 and older, more than 19%, more than 19% of adults over 18 have been diagnosed and or treated for anxiety disorder. I don't know how good you are at math, but 19% is darn near a quarter of our population, adult population. Treated. Or at least diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, that does not include those who have not been treated. Those have not been diagnosed. The statistics tell us that ladies, females, are 25% more likely to suffer from anxiety than men. And 31% of U.S. adults over the age of 18 experience an anxiety disorder of some kind in their lifetime. Listen, if 19% of adults 18 and older suffer from some sort of anxiety disorder, that's 40 million adults in the United States alone. 40 million. And again, that doesn't include those untreated or undiagnosed. Only 36% of people who have some type of anxiety disorder or anxiety period seek treatment because it's scary. It's troubling. It's hard because people treat us differently when we show our imperfections, when we share where we're at and we're truthful and transparent. That doesn't work very well in this culture. But let me give you good news. Let me encourage you again before I close tonight. Now I want you to I want you to know that um, we're going to be talking about this for the next two weeks as well. We're going to be talking about overcoming anxiety tonight, right now, next week, and the next Wednesday. So for three Wednesdays in a row, because this is a huge problem in our society. We need answers, and the Bible has answers. Don't shake your head. Don't wave it off, because I'm telling you, there's only one thing that works in this world, and it's God's way. If you want to get better, I don't know if you remember, but a man had had physical, mental problems all his life and he sat by a pool and the the rumor was and, and it had this mystical kind of aura about it that if you could get in the water you could it would heal you of anything Jesus and the disciples came by and they saw this man lying near the water his claim was that nobody would help him and he couldn't get to it. But Jesus said, stand up. Mm -hmm. And he asked him, do you really want to get well? The man said, overcome with the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. And Jesus said, you don't need to go get in the water. The answer to your problems is not in that water. The answers to your problems, the source of your healing is in me. Now look at me. 
look me in the eye. Do you want to get better? Because I know the way there. And his name is Jesus. It's true. All those things, those great things that we've heard about him are true. Do you want to get better? Then come along with us. Watch this again if you need to. Watch and listen for the next two weeks as well. We're going to talk about how God and his word can help you and show you how to overcome your anxiety and depression. If you know someone who needs to hear this, please share it with them. Please. There's too many people with this difficulty, with these problems of anxiety, depression. They need us to show them the way. So share this. Share this with people. Tell people, hey, there's a way to overcome anxiety. Come see Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff. Let's pray for people earnestly and diligently, okay? Believers, all right, church. All right, sulfur prayer warriors, get on your knees because I know you're great at this and pray for those who are crippled by their anxiety and depression. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, you are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. Lord Jesus, as we listen to this, as we learn, as we hear your word, Father God, open your spirit to our minds, hearts, souls, and even our bodies, Father God, to know your truth, to know that you have a way out of that box that we feel like we're in sometimes. So Father God, be with us, lead us, guide us. We love you, Jesus. We love you so much. You're so good. So good. Thank you that we do not have to live in anxiety. Lord, we praise you and thank you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I love you all. I really do. And God loves you too. So I can't wait to see you again. Come see us on Sunday morning. If it's not on Facebook, please come by. See us 8447 Sulphur Road, Sulphur, Kentucky 40070. Put it in your GPS and come on. Come see us and join the family. You would love it. I'm telling you the truth. God bless you and I'll see you real soon.